welcome to Huawei Developer Competition's Q&A Live. There are mainly three aspects of content today. First of all, introduction to the competition. Secondly, expert in interpretation. Finally, questions and answers. Now, let's get to the point. Huawei Developer Competitions is our flagship event for ICT development. Our industry expertise is now open to you to find new solutions to real problems. The competition named the Spark Infinity this year encouraged developers to adopt leading technologies into creative projects and applications. Two tracks are available, Cloud Application Innovation and World Challenges. The The following figure shows the timeline. You can also check the competition website for more detailed information. Time schedule may be different in different regions, subject to the official notice on the website. Here are some information about the procedure that can help you. Step 1. Visit our landing page, learn about the competition, and choose your track. Step 2. Sign up, search for your country in competition region list, and send an email to the region contact. Sign up as a team via email too. Step 3. Build your application use Huawei Cloud technologies and submit them. Step 4. Participate, participate in the judging. Step 5, winning medals and prize. Now, let's invite Ms. Hong, Senior DevOps Expert, Huawei Cloud, to share the topic. Please leave your questions on the discussing board. Hello everyone, welcome to the live stream of Huawei Cloud Competition. Let me give you a quick introduction of myself before we start. My name is Mo Yu, I'm currently a product manager in Huawei Cloud, responsible for DevSecOps solution and services to you about our fantastic product, Huawei DevCloud. As you can see on my screen, my topic today is DevCloud wants to build applications more efficiently and securely. But before I jump into pitching DevCloud to you guys, Let's rewind a minute and take a look at what DevSecOps is and why DevSecOps is so important in today's world. There's no doubt it's been a couple of challenging years during the pandemic. People are adapting to the new normal of working remotely. Unlike code collaboration, automatic build and software release become essential to business success when you no longer have all your software team sitting next to you. So as we know, every business is seeking for digital transformation or is born digital. We are also facing many challenges during the transformation. There are three main challenges we are facing nowadays. As Garner predicts, there will be 500 million new applications to be built in organizations around the globe. This is a huge number, but we currently don't have it. The demand is almost more than five times the capacity. Besides that, citizen developers are continuously citizen developers will increase by four times by 2025. 
The second main challenge we are facing is high cost application operations. The technical debt will continue to increase and just maintaining the existing applications will cost almost 40% of the enterprise IT budget. On the other hand, the supply chain attack is also a risky one. The attack on open source software Sorod 650-2020, North American networking company SolarWinds was attacked. And 425 out of US Fortune 500 companies and the top 10 US telecommunication companies, even Pentagon, or a so now DevSecOps come to the rescue. What is DevSecOps? First, we have to answer ops. You might already be familiar with DevOps method. It, it, it is not only a methodology, it evolves from agile development and work process, software engineering methods, and the DevOps toolchain. DevOps practice combines software development and the IT operation. It aims to shorten the system development lifecycle and provide continuously delivery with high software quality. The keywords of DevOps are automation, continuous integration and delivery, and continuous monitoring. Based on the whole DevOps workflow and methods, DevOps is more than incident management. So in short, it integrates security practice within the whole DevOps process. Now you get a picture of why DevSecOps is so important. You might wonder how Huawei, which is also one of the leading global tech companies, adopt DevSecOps inside the company. Let me show you how we improve our DevSecOps solution over time. So we company-wise continue prioritizing modelization of software solution and engineering and IT tools to improve research and development. I will talk about each phase briefly. From the initial planning phase, our architectures use project management and the modeling design tools to make security design and privacy assessment which enables the developers to write software that is protected from security vulnerabilities. In the development phase, our engineer's code is also protected by a lot of plugin code check tools, which covers a wide range of languages and areas. The code check tool can detect security or other issues early before the code goes to the production environment. And now we come to the testing phase. I think this might be the most neglected part in software development, but we, Huawei, and never forget about that. We have automatic CI-CD pipeline testing, helping deliver software with high and accuracy. And for the release phase, we use software signature to secure the data integrity of this and deploy. So our so our customers can be ensured that the software will not be changed over the like the networking or the transformation. For the operation, we have secure operation process, a lot of like IT tools. We also have a powerful support team for security consultancy. And the result by fully embracing the DevSecOps solution is incredible. I will show you many numbers here, and then I will just pick more than once. We discovered 100 plus vulnerabilities which affect the 4 millions of open source software before they cause the and for the binary scans per day, regulations per dance per day, and also we have mobile app scans. The whole time each phase costs in DevSecOps workflow are all listed here. From failure to recovery, it only takes one minute. It works the same for from the code commit to build and 10 minutes from the code commit to testing, one hour from testing to deployment. The each iteration cycle is takes around like one week 
and for from the product manager receive the requirements to the final feature delivery it takes around one month we also have 200 thousand pipeline executions per day, and 500,000 builds per day. You can see our R&D scale is very powerful and we take care of them. DevSecOps practice, and we also have accumulated years of experience of DevSecOps solution. So today I want to bring our best practice to you by introducing the application lifecycle management solution. The solution is built based on Huawei's 30 years experience in research and development. Let's take a look at what DevCloud provides. So DevCloud provides end-to-end one-stop desktop solutions. It provides all-in-one developer service phase and through the operation and the monitoring phase. You can use DevCloud's integrated capacities. Uh, you can use DevCloud integrated capabilities throughout the whole DevSecOps workflow without having to find some other services to complete your daily work. And I will talk about the detail about all the services we provide later. Our platform is also all about flexibility. Whether you are a trend developer, you can always trust DevCloud to build what you need. We support, uh, we support both low-code and no-code development approach with rich preset templates and components. Besides that, no matter what applications you are building, like I listed here, uh, microservices, API, function, web, mobile, uh, you name it, DevCloud seamlessly integrates with other services in Huawei Cloud ecosystem, like service stage, function graph, to support deployment of serverless functions, microservices, etc application to multiple environments. We also support other common application types like uh, embedded systems, uh, AI, and uh, etc. You can start from the idea to the final application on DevCloud. And now we have already accumulated three First, you can plan and collaborate better with DevCloud project man and cloud man. The project man is DevCloud's project management tool featuring agile development, which and rich customization, etc. Here are some of the highlights. It has professional and agile run and lean Kanban process models. It also provides project space management, like well, whether you have a large scale or structured or unified project space, you can all have it on project map. It provides best practices and out-of-box solutions driven management. In short, you can use Scrum project in requirements, track bugs, post the documents in the cloud, and again, insights from reports. Project Man helps you take a solid first step when you enter the DevSecOps journey. Improve the knowledge sharing situation in your team. DevCloud is also here for you by offering a secure, trusted, comprehensive knowledge lifecycle management tool, CloudWiki. It supports player editing. You can request approval for your document and start an online dis discussion with your teammates. So your team can definitely benefit from this fast and powerful and break the information silo. So now I'm going to show you a demo of Project Man. Okay, hold on one second and I'm gonna...
So what you are looking at is the home page of DevCloud. Now you can click it and it will navigate you into the work item page. Under the existing features, you can fast create a story here. Let me do a quick demo here. And the story name is user can make order. And now we enter a description and edit the description here. As a user, I want to order a phone so that I can make a phone call. You can set the priority and severity here. And also, it also has some customized uh, parameters you can set, like the story point. After we have successfully created a story, let's create two tasks using the same way. The one task is called backend dev work. And we enter another task, web dev work. Now let's go to the sprint planning page. You can plan and track your work here. So we create a sprint, it's called sprint two, and then we set the plan duration. Okay, now we can drag the created to the sprint. Now let's take a look at what we have in sprint two. So we have to finish the story and tasks, and you can also track the progress here. If you have already finished to close one. Okay, now I'm going to show you a statistics page. We have comprehensive statistics like your work progress and you can also create a custom spring to status chart. And we save it. Yeah, now you can see the whole work progress you have here. Okay, it's a quick demo for the project man service. Let's back to the slide and we will continue to talk about um, the incredible services we have. So after the plan phase, now it's time to start coding. So we have talked about digital transformation in the beginning, and you can also like notice that many software teams nowadays are also practicing cloud transformation, especially moving their development environment to the cloud. So we tailor made cloud IDE. It is a lightweight. The cloud ID provides out-of-box capabilities such as coding, debugging, and one-click deployment to Huawei cloud infrastructure. If you are local system expansion, the cloud ID marketplace is also the way to go. It combines the open source plugin framework and open Managing your code is also an essential part of development phase. So based on Git, 100 billion lines of code, which is very like, amazing. Huawei provides enterprise level secure, trustworthy, and end to end traceable code management tool, Code Hub. In Code Hub, code security is a top one priority when we consider what capability a code repository should provide. It secure your code storage for angles, like I listed here the access control, data production. RBAC models, non-repudiation, authentication, and et cetera. So with CodeHub, you can submit your code with confidence. Now, now let me show you a demo of CodeHub. Pause free with a readme file. And we go to settings, we set the merge request policies. Now you can see it can be also merged after complete resolution.
we set the branch name and uh, we require a minimum number of reviewers, like two. Okay, the policy has been successfully created. Now we create merge request and see if the policy works. Let's name it create file, new file, work in progress. Just to remind you, the expected behavior we just uh, created before is there must be no unsolved uh, comments before it goes merge into the master branch. So we create a couple comments. Now we have one unresolved comment. It's called MR comments. We go back to the uh, merge. Let me fast forward here. Okay, like I just, you just see, we have uh, resolved all the comments. And let's see the first condition will be giving us, uh, yes, a green light here. And now we create a build task. Okay, it's a build action here. It's built with Maven. And then we will create a behavior. Let's testify the behavior we just created. We add a code hub tab. Okay, give it uh, just a few moments. Yeah, we select the task, it's code hub record tab. And uh, we enable the merge request event triggering. It's complete here. Yeah, it also gave us a green light because it has already been merged into a pipeline and it connects the pipeline here. So you can click it uh, very like. It also get reviewed. So now the merge condition all been met. Let's see the detail here. Go back to the slides and uh, talk more about the services Step Cloud provides. Uh, the key information DevSecOp is trying to send is the security part. With the traditional security concerns, so DevSecOps emerged as an approach to incorporate the management of security through the development cycle. Let me introduce a code check. So code check has this engine to support stat statistic, um, like code check in 10 languages, such as C, C++, Java, Python, and Go. It also supports license compliance check code check rules, which covers code style, uh, quality, and security, et cetera. So code check analyzed your code comprehensively to avoid severe issues. You can also use it with Cloud Pipeline, which provides a flexible orchestration and scheduling. It supports our pipeline, stages, job hierarchy, and it also supports sequential and parallel jobs running. You can take a thorough test on your code by adding the code check job in the pipeline and setting the quality gate for the result. Okay, let me give you a quick demo of a cloud pipeline.
Okay. Here, what you're seeing is a cloud build task. Like I said, you can like orchestrate your build job, deploy job, and also the code check job into the pipeline. So it kind of kind of glues everything together. So it comes in handy when you have multiple jobs and tasks which have to run in order or in parallel. Here is a list of cloud build tasks. And uh, we have already created one. It's called cloud build demo. And we go to the cloud deploy here. Now we go back to Cloud Pipeline. We can create uh, from Pipeline from scratch or templates. Now we have already have a template here for us. It's called Pipeline Demo. And let's create Pipeline from the template we just have. The code repository, and you can also select the branch, and then it comes to the template. Yeah, we select pipeline demo. The whole workflows has been here because it's all in the template. Okay, we change the name. Uh, workflows and you can either use the exact same task or you can select whatever you have or whatever you want. And so we have the cloud deploy deployment task. So we can change the task and we set as the right here. So you, you can use it by runtime. Every time you run the pipeline, you can configure the parameter. Let's save it and see what happens. The branch is mastered. And we have three runtime parameters. Moments and see the result. Now you can see the cloud build task and it provides a very log so you can debug when something goes wrong. Okay, that's a cloud pipeline we just see. And the code check will also be out soon and tuned and uh, let's go to the next powerful service we have, Cloud Build. So Build is an intermediate stage between code and uh, artifacts. It's the most important stage in continuous integration. DevCloud's Cloud Build service provides high speed, low cost, and easy to configure hybrid customers, shorten the build time, and improve efficiency. So in Cloud Build, we are continuously improving the build time to give the customers ultimate experience. And today we are announcing the advanced feature that we are going to be launched soon of Cloud Build. It's C, C++ distributed compiling technique. So we use precise incremental analysis and a million level concurrent scheduling technique to speed up C, C++ in time. For our real life test, we are looking at a 20 times faster improvement, which is very incredible. The build time of a 5 million lines of C, C++ source code decreased from 1 hour to 3 minutes. So most of the developers are bothered by the C, C++ build speed. Cloud Build offers the best solution for you. 
Let me also show you a quick demo of Cloud Build. Now let's uh, jump into creating task here. And you can configure the build action. We have a lot of um, templates. Pre stop, stop a second. And uh, you can have it scheduled wrong. Like you can select the time here and uh, you can select uh, what days you want the job to run, like Monday, Tuesday, or the weekdays. Now the task created successfully, and it's running right now. It's downloading the code, and we're with Maven build. Then we upload the software package to release the repository. Uh, I will introduce it later. So you can see this is the uh, software just been built from the task we created. Now we can save it as a template uh, for our further use. You don't have to create it from scratch. And you can manage all the templates here. You can see the copy. This is the one I just created. And you can set it as the favorite ones. And then now we will find the template we just created. It's, oh yeah, it's just called template. And everything has been set up. Okay, the task quickly and it's running. And we are seeing the expected behavior, downloading the code, build with Maven test and upload the package. Okay, let's get back to the slides. Now I just showed you the Cloud Build can upload the software package to a release repository. Take a look at how the Cloud Manage Build output artifact. The Cloud Artifact is a secure back management tool which supports 10 plus mainstream package formats, including Maven, PyP, Go, NPM, etc. So you don't have to install and set up multiple repositories because Cloud Artifact can work as a single source of choice for artifact management. Artifact security is also a big concern in many business. We provide RBAC authentication and uh, authorization. We have multiple checksum types and you can feel relaxed to keep your artifact here because we store artifact safe technique. So then the artifact will be ready to be deployed. We also have one service that can deploy your artifacts or the, any packages to the cloud. Cloud Deploy is our professional application deployment services of multiple forms and technology stacks. It supports and seamlessly pipeline integration so CI/CD workflow can be all set up in the pipeline. It works with microservices, serverless functions, Kubernetes, and et cetera. Operation and monitoring can be also enabled during the application deployment process. Now I'm gonna show two demos. One is for Cloud Artifact and another one is for Cloud Deploy. And now we go to release repository. And oh, okay, first we use templates, uh, code hub templates. We just create a Java demo for our final artifact. Now we have a 
sampled code repository here. Let's build it. And now I will fast forward this part because I have already shown you how Cloud Build works and how it uploads the software package to the release repository. Okay, now it's to our release repository. Can open see it has multiple metadata here. They have basic information like the size, path, address. This address is used in Cloud Deploy, and I will show you later. Also, it has multiple checksum types, like I just said. In the build information, it can trace the task. It generated the artifacts. And we try to change the name here. It's called test demo. Okay. And then we can also check this. So once we change it to the production package, it cannot be um, changed anymore. Okay, let's get, go back to production package. You cannot edit the release package anymore. So it kind of log uh, the version for you and you can be, uh, it can be safely deployed without any change. Okay, now let's get, go to the release repository settings. We have a cleanup policy when you want to save the storage cost. You can customize the delete days. Uh, and also you can ignore files in the production package state. And also you can ignore some file paths here. Like we won't delete the match the files. So we can change the recycle. We also synchronize the permissions and roles um, from the project man. Okay, let's take a look at um, the cloud artifact. We have we support multiple package types: uh, the Maven PM, Go, Pepe, RPM, Derbing, and also um, our package types support. We select, uh, we configure the name. Uh, it will create a two, one is a release and the, another one is snapshot repository for you. Let's take a look at the download the configuration file. And you can replace it with your local settings. Now we did a quick Maven deploy. Let's see. Yeah, we replace the settings and uh, we do the Maven deploy. Oh, let's see. Okay, it has already been deployed to the repository we just created. It has multiple checksums and the details. You can also set the user permissions. For this member, let's give it permission to the Maven repositories we just created and the C. So right now the uh, user don't have any permission, so it's he can see and we refresh the page because we have granted him the permissions. Okay, now we're seeing the expect. Okay, let's take a look at the demo of Cloud uh, Deploy as well. So we go to a deployment task. Now you can see we select one task. It's called Start or Stop Spring Boot application. So we are showing it the Spring Boot app deployment um, as a sample. Our stop Spring Boot and Operation Stop, and we add the install JDK task here. And then we can select deployment source. So 
but the final step is to check the health status of the URLs. We create the host groups. And we import the ECS. Uh, you can configure the username and password here. And now it's refreshed it and yeah, it's showing up right now. Your installation pass. And uh, also we select the software package. So it's from the release repository I just showed you. And the download pass. So after we configure the deployment source, we can start Spring Boot application. And the pass is the, the jar file we just selected. Okay, the, we will trial two times if it fails. Okay, and it's the URL, the application will be running. Wait a few. Now let's stop a minute. It, it's, it is expected behavior and we are seeing that it has been successfully uh, deployed. We can also configure the parameters. It can be either customer, so we use the, like the parameter here is the version. So every time we run the deployment task, we can change it. Okay. Now we update the version to uh, two, the version two. We do it again and see the URL. Okay, it's working. Let's go to the another test, uh, another service that we have in that cloud. So it's coming to the test base. Like I said before, testing is the most neglected part, but it plays an important role in a successful delivery. That cloud cloud test is a large scale and high frequency automatic test factory. So it provides one stop full lifecycle management test activities from the test design, generate the testing case, and uh, the test execution and analysis. You can get a continuous testing and feedback on cloud tests to help you improve your team's test coverage and test quality. Stay tuned. The last pack of services I want to introduce is a unified operation and maintenance solutions, which includes AOM, APM, and LTS. So AOM monitors machines or containers. It covers application performance and status, infrastructure status, cloud resource usage, and application performance uh, management, which is uh, APM monitors and manage the performance of cloud applications in real time. Again, JVM monitor, et cetera. And the log 10 service, which is short for uh, LTS collects logs from different sources, such as hosts, hybrid, uh, cloud, or multi-cloud environments. So it can analyze when there's something going wrong. So the ONM solution, they overall guard your application and resources health and guilt. So I have been talking about all the services uh, we provide and uh, give you um, services that's been uh, on the Dev Cloud international version right now. Testify our services work by a successful customer story. 
Depot Express is one of the top uh, 500 companies in China. Its core business is large-scale express delivery. Other business includes vehicle warehousing and supply chain, etc. So Depot Express officially joined hands with Huawei Cloud Dev Cloud to take advantage of the safe and reliable DevSecOps ability to improve Depot Express CI/CD process. What they are looking for are security and uh, high availability, comprehensive uh, cap capability, and uh, delivery with high quality. So after fully embracing DevCloud into research and development workflow, here is I will show you. So I think the results speak for itself. provides data protection, quality management, uh, process normalization, and automatic CI-CD pipelines. Depot Express now have 750 plus pipeline jobs running right now in the cloud. And uh, they have 80 plus systems have been already migrated to the cloud. And there will be more. Um, and also they have already released uh, say almost 700 versions. And also, we have a hundred plus management units, uh, so you can guard the whole DevSecOps workflow. And the result is they have already have eighty percent process automated, and the test coverage increased six times, and the quality defects dropped seven hundred, uh, seventy percent. So DevCloud helps DevCon Express deepen its digital transformation and it supports 700 uh, research and development engineers' daily work. Uh, that's it for my, uh, for my topic today. And DevCloud uh, is coming soon. Please stay tuned and ask me any questions. If you're interested, you can go to the main page of Huawei Cloud DevCloud and get Thank you, Ms. Hong. Thank you, Ms. Hong, for your wonderful sharing. Now we will take some questions and answer them. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, sure. Uh, I I have seen some questions here. So the first one is, uh, Project Man is used for tracking application development process. If the competition teams use Project Man service only, is this enough to be qualified? Uh, yes, as long as you are using um, a Huawei cloud service is qualified. Yeah. And the second one, I think it's asking for the cloud test, a code check, and sec dev launch date. Yeah, they are quite po popular. Uh, so the expected launch date will be by the end of this year. And uh, by that time, all the services and documentations will be ready at internationalhuaweicloud.com. Uh, so you can stay tuned. Please, Ms. Hong, here is some questions collection. Yeah, I have finished the second one. Uh, do I need to repeat the first two answers? Okay, so I guess, no, I, I will continue. The third one is, 
how do I collect or archive project information locally after project is complete? So uh, in the project settings, I think there there is an archive um, selection, but if you mean you want to download the project information uh, to your local space, I think it's currently, uh, it currently don't support. But I will give the feedback to our project man uh, team is to see if they can launch these features uh, in the future. Okay, the third, the fourth one, the batch incremental deployment policies. We do have, we do support batch deployment policies, but the uh, the maybe here is one... some uh net some network uh, issue with Miss Tang. So please uh. Please hold on a second. Can you, can you hear me? Okay, I will continue. So the batch deployment policy, we do have, uh, we do support batch deployment, but for the incremental deployment, uh, can you give me more detail? Um, I'm not sure I understand it correctly. So, what do you mean by uh, incremental deployment? Okay, I'll wait for uh, something shows up on the chat. But for the last question, how do I specify the server or server configuration to run the generated build task? I think what you mean is you want to use your own build environment, right? Uh, if, if that's the case, we do support that. So in the, when you create a build task, uh, there will be a section that enables you to select your own build environment. Uh, hi, Xiaonan, I think that's all for the questions. Okay, thank, thank you, Meng Yu. Okay. If uh, no one is asking questions on... If no one is asking questions online, uh, today's sharing uh, is going over. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Hang Meng Yu. Uh, if, if all have any questions, you can visit our uh, Huawei Cloud Developer Forum. Scan the QR to join and ask questions uh, online. Uh, our, de our developer support team will will answer questions and also you can share your opinion and expertise on this forum wish you a good journey on huawei cloud huawei developer competition thank you that's all